Amoebas are single-celled eukaryotic organisms that survive by capturing food organisms and consuming them. Amoebas play a key role in maintaining bacteria levels in the environment. The amoeba we're going to cover in this video is the Nigleria fowleri, more commonly known as the brain-eating amoeba. Firstly, the cell has a nucleus. The nucleus assists in mitosis, storage of genetic material, and RNA synthesis. Next, cytoplasm. The cytoplasm forms the body of the amoeba and gives it its shape, transports nutrients, and forms this pseudopodia, which are cytoplasm-based structures connected to the amoeba that helps with capture of brain. Next is the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. It generates power from food consumed by the amoeba. Next, vacuoles. This cell has a food vacuole and a contractile vacuole. The food vacuole digests ingested food consumed by the amoeba to convert into energy. And the contractile vacuole controls and regulates water balance in the amoeba for survival. This cell also has a flagella, but it's only present in its flagellated stage. The flagella greatly assists in the movement of Nigleria fowleri, acting almost as a propeller on the amoeba for it to travel with. And last but not least, the ribosomes. The ribosome's job is to make protein. They read the messenger RNA sequence and translate that genetic code into a specified string of amino acids, which then grows into a long chain that folds and forms proteins. The Nigleria fowleri most commonly feeds on surrounding bacteria. This is usually algae, plant cells, fungi, as well as microscopic protozoans and metazoans. However, the amoeba also feeds on astrocytes and neurons in your brain if given the opportunity. Cysts are the inactive state of amoebas with low mobility and functions but high defense. The cyst state is essentially a dormant state for the amoeba. In this stage, the cytoplasm shrinks, causing the cell walls to strengthen themselves so the amoeba can inactively defend itself with a strong cell wall while also conserving its energy. Cysts can stay dormant for months, only allowing or keeping molecules in with their thick walls. This state is activated when Nigleria fowleri's environment changes. The flagellated stage focuses on high mobility over reproduction to explore and travel to new environments. This form is the fastest of the three, using its flagella to quickly travel its surroundings to find the optimal living habitat. However, most brain-eating amoeba infections are not in this stage. The trophozoite stage focuses on asexual reproduction, gathering of nutrients, and adaptation. The trophozoite form is a sort of all-rounder between the stages, being significantly more mobile, but less so than the flagellated form. This form gathers nutrients and food through its lobular pseudopodia, which acts as a net to catch nutrients and food. In infections in humans, the amoeba is typically in its trophozoite form. Although the full details aren't concrete, Scientists can at least confirm that Nigleria fowleri gets to the brain through your nose. In the nose, Nigleria fowleri is generally able to slip under the radar of your immune system and reach your nerve cells in your brain. From here, the amoeba is irresistibly drawn in by the messenger chemical acetylcholine, which is used to send messages to the brain. As the amoeba follows the trail of acetylcholine, it reaches your brain and begins to multiply and feed on your brain's astrocytes and neurons. Where does Nigleria fowleri reside? Although the amoeba can be found in soil, it almost always infects people in fresh water during the summer. This is due to the fact that this is when the bacteria and amoeba thrive. Warm, still fresh water containing Nigleria fowleri is generally found in poorly maintained pools and abandoned buildings containing stagnant fresh water. It's also found in natural warm water sources, such as hot springs, lakes, and rivers. Nigleria fowleri has a staggering 97% death rate, so saying most wouldn't want to catch it is a massive understatement. Thankfully, Nigleria fowleri cases are extremely rare, with only 381 recorded cases from the start of properly recorded medical trials stemming from the time span of 1747 to 2018. Although, it can also be noted that cases may have been present but gone undocumented. This means per year, roughly 1.4 individuals worldwide would be victim to Nigleria fowleri. In addition, no cases have been spotted in Canada so far. 
However, there may still be other harmful bacteria in unmaintained freshwater, so make sure to be careful what freshwater you enter this summer.